Emmy Hall at TFL Truck, and I'm so excited today because we have a very special guest, and his name is Mr. Truck. Is your first name Mac? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. Today we're going to go up the Ike Gauntlet HD with this Silverado 2500 at the maximum payload, maximum trader capacity on this. So we'll see how it does. You know, we're trying to see how it does against the diesel that we did last, the GMC. This is gas powered. Yes, it is. Oh. Yep, that's right, folks. We're going to take 20,500 pounds, the very maximum, and we're going to truck up there. I see what you did there. Yeah, see what I did there? <laughs> yeah we're going to do it heavy duty style. Nathan, do you know how much work it takes editing an Ike Gauntlet video? Oh my God, it takes tons of work. We have to edit it. We have to put together the trucks, logistics. We got to get everybody together. It just takes so much work. It takes like three weeks for Kent to fill up those water containers. So click on the link below and pledge how much? Well, we would like you to give us $2, but whatever you can afford. $2 a month, that's $24 a year. How cheap is that? That's really cheap. And if you go up to $5 a month, you can get a handy dandy t-shirt just like this with TFL truck and TFL car right there. And if you go up to $10 a month, then we'll throw in a trucker hat. Yeah, that's right. A shirt and a trucker hat. So click on the link below and please help support this channel so that we can bring more great truck videos to you like the Ike Gauntlet, which let's face it, is a boatload of work. It certainly is. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you. Right now we're about to head downhill for the brake test. We're coming out of the Eisenhower Tunnel here on I-70 in beautiful mountainous Colorado. I love this state, but let's see what happens. We're going out, what are we at, Mr. Truck 50? We're at 50 miles an hour, All right. so we'll see how well our grade shift works, how well our trailer brakes work. We are set at eight and a half on the game. Okay, so that means that when you actually press the brakes here, you don't have to do trailer brakes separately, correct? Right, it pushes them okay. both, the truck brakes and the trailer brakes. So, uh, but I have separate trailer brakes if I need them, correct? Yes, if you're in like icy conditions uh -huh. or or if your trailer is swaying excessively, you can use the trailer brake independently and that's over on the left side on this new Silverado. They used to be down lower and actually you can see them. I would still rather have them on the right side where the semis have them, where most people have them. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we have. This HD2500 has the six liter Vortec V8 gas engine. 360 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque. We're gonna to see how well this does up the mountain and to see if you actually need to spend that extra eight grand on a Duramax and the Allison combination, the Duramax diesel. Let's say you're driving along and your trailer starts to fishtail a little bit. How do you, first of all, I see people driving and it looks like they're not, like they don't know that it's fishtailing. So how, what does it feel like and then how do you stop it? Well, if that fishtailing of the trailer is moving your truck around, it's gonna cause problems. And then you can use your manual brake controller uh -huh. and apply a little bit of pressure to your brake to slow that down. But if it's doing a lot, it means you're not hooked up properly. You may need okay. a weight distributing hitch or properly adjusted hitch. And you may have the load not right on your truck. You need to have you know, some load on the front, but not too much on the back. You create a pendulum situation, which would make it sway. So proper loading the trailer is a big part of that. So there's actually a lot of physics that goes into properly loading a trailer and making sure that you're gonna be as safe as possible when you're towing. Right, that common sense physics. <laughs> <laughs> but on, nowadays, a lot of the larger trailers now come with their own version of sway control, right, Ken? That's right, and even some trailers now, you can actually get sway control on trailers. But uh, yes, and that, there, there's so many things that they make automatic on these, the, you know, the grade shifting, the, everything they do on here it, it takes less skill to drive a truck pulling trailer than it used to which is good but uh, you know for the truck sway control to kick in it's got to be a dramatic sway and what it does it breaks the truck straight and use left and right brakes 
on the truck itself mm -hmm. to control that sway action. It doesn't, uh, earlier versions of some of the models actually would break the trailer, but most of them don't do that now. It's all about controlling the truck in that situation. Weighing in at 11,920, you know what, Wait, it's 12,000 pounds, come on. We have the frozen remains of Secretariat and Tea Biscuit in the back, so you good horsies. Actually, what we have is large water containers in the back, so the total altogether is 12,000 pounds. Makes for some damn good towing. We're at maximum capacity of this truck, so, you know, 20,500 pounds. Yeah. Right, for a full, yeah. And That's if crazy. I was worried about those truck brakes and you feel the vibration, they're getting mm -hmm. a little warm, then I could, you know, do a little more trailer braking. And that is, that is essentially using the trailer to slow you down because exactly. the trailer's slowing yeah. down and then it's physically pulling you back. And that's why it helps you in a sway situation because uh -huh. it straightens the snake out. You know, the trailer straightens the truck out and that straightens the sway out. So if you're in that kind of situation, being able to use the manual control or knowing to use it, and maybe practicing a little bit before a trip like that would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. But here's another runaway truck ramp. Do you want to take it? Okay, let's Whee! put it on this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, it's very interesting uh, to know what to do with trailers. I've been towing for 40 years, so I've got some ex some experience. I got a CDL, so I can tow the big ones. But uh, yeah, there's there's a lot to do, and I'm I'm so happy now that you know this has a 14 rear end, a good towing axle ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, trucks anymore, it's getting hard to actually buy the wrong truck because there's so many things that happen automatically on them. But do you find that um, that the salesmen and saleswomen really know if I come in and I say I need a truck and I got a trail that I'm going to talk I'm going to trail you know every week? Do you find that the salespeople are really knowledgeable about the truck's capabilities when it comes to trailering? You're like a stand-up comedian now, right? Is that your... <laughs> no, no. I, I sold trucks for ten years for uh -huh. dealership. I sold for AAA Auto Club, and believe me, when the internet came along with all the information that's available out there. That's when people got educated and knew more than the truck salesman. Because the truck salesman, his idea is to sell you a vehicle. Right. And, you know, it's not about the right truck. It's about the least truck for the most money. That's the that's the formula a salesperson would use. So that's not really in your best interest. You're, you're wanting to do your research. You want to find out what the towing capacities are and, you know, what the ratings of these trucks are. That's why that SAE rating that uh, Jay was a 2870, or I, I get the numbers mixed up, but they were actually going to rate... Uh, the towing capacities of each truck, which would be so good for the consumer. Uh -huh. Yeah, but only Toyota's doing it now. Yes. Yep, okay, Andre's got the, he's got the set your phasers to stun. I guess I okay. can roll this window there. 323. 323? Wow, that's pretty good. I thought it'd be a lot higher than that. 323, I, I figured we'd be in the fives. Really? I think it's because yeah. of the gain you have is set pretty high on the trailer. Yeah, bags. we're trying to put more weight back there. We've had a real hard time with it. Finally, we got some temperature, 283. That's, that's our hottest rear. one yet. Well, that's really? on the rear wheels, that's not yeah. on the trailer. Oh, that's not the trailer? No, that's oh, rear I'm wheel. sorry, yeah, that's rear wheels. So that's still good, that's still good brake okay. system. Stop it, it's sad. Trailer, trailer. Shoot, still 150. We cannot make that temperature go up no well, matter well, what we well, do. No, but that's good, we, we right? Hit the, I hit the manual a few times we were talking about it. Well, I was showing it's balance. The <laughs> Folks, I bet you noticed a lot of the water is missing here. It's all the way down there. And the reason why is because we would be exceeding our 3,152 pound maximum payload. Where did they get the extra two pounds? I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, could you imagine over at GM, they're actually using little weights and like, where's one, there's two, up, oh, that's it. Two pounds, we're over. Just kind of weird to me. Anyway, we don't have that much sloshing. The water's so low here that it just kind of pulls to the back. It does create a little bit of a wiggle, but you're not going to really feel it from inside the cab because, well, it's such a beefy truck. No freaking vents back here. <laughs> yeah, come on, $50,000 truck, no vents in the back. 
All righty, so All we're right. ready, for the, ready for the launch and the stop button. Okay, yep. so we're gonna hit the start button when we pass the yellow sign on the freeway, like we always do. Yes, that's always when we do it. There and we, we are zeroed out on our MPGs, so Bunch we will chewy. see. Chewy, get us out of here! I, I, I think my down. foot's clear outside the floor, yes. I'm okay. We had this problem. problem on the other side of the mountain, too. Yeah, except it was worse there because it was a lot steeper. And we are past the yellow sign. Okay. All right, here we go. Now, whoa, whoa, that was so redlining. We almost made 31 miles an hour there. <laughs> Which is this much is, Well, this is where we have to get our speed for right. momentum. Yeah. The first right. part. Now, all of our horsepower, and we don't have a lot of horsepower in this truck. We've only got 360, and that kicks in at 5,400 RPMs. It's almost wide open. Yeah, yeah almost, almost wide line. open. So right now, we're right around. 5400 so we're at peak horsepower but our peak torque is a lot lower our peak torque of 380 is at 4200 and that just brought us down to way below 4000 yeah, rpm right we're yeah like 35 yeah 36 37 but why would it drop so far below peak this is torque? what we this is the same problem we even had with the half ton truck that had the big engine we we're doing a towing thing and it was doing beautiful and then for some reason it drops way down our guess yeah. is gas mileage right. BG. That's our guess. That, that right. This is how the GM yeah. guys had it figured. But if I've got this um, configured right now for towing, I mean, my tow button is on. So yeah. I would think that the computer would know, okay, they're towing something. I want to try to keep this car at peak torque for as long as I can. Yeah, okay. that's what tow mode does. It actually tries yeah. to hold that RPM longer, and this doesn't seem to want to do that. Because where are we at right now? Well, we're at 3,600. What's our speed? Uh, our speed is at 54 miles an hour. Okay. Alright, and I think the speed limit here is 60, 65, right? 65. And in the state of Colorado, you are permitted to go up to the speed limit with a trailer. Oh, you are? Yes. yes. In some states, you are not allowed to. We've had people chime in about that, too. Right. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Some, some states are just 55 no matter what, right? That's, well, California, yeah. Cases. California is 55 trailer and then 65 car. Okay. We've towing 12,000 pounds. We've got this setup level, the hitch is adjustable, and that's also part of the weight distributing hitch. We're not using the weight distributing hitch because this trailer is only 12,000, the truck is rated to tow 13,000 with or without weight distributing. So we're all perfectly well there. Now you're floored, correct? Yes. You, right have not, you did not ask it to do that, it did no, that on its own. It needs, yeah, yeah, it yeah, and it, yeah, and it needs to hold that power band right, right there, but it wants to see the same as gas, like what Nathan was saying. It, it should be on a heavy duty with a 14 rear end tow mode. It should want to give us power. Power. Up the hill, power. Now, we normally are doing this with diesel trucks, and this is gas powered. So, I mean, what do we, I, I feel like we would just be like flying up this if we had a diesel. Yeah, it would well, be. there's a lot of things with the diesel. First of all, they're all turbocharged. So turbo diesels mm -hmm. tend to have more horsepower at high altitude than the gas equivalent and definitely more torque. In fact, the diesel that would be in this truck puts out nearly double the amount of torque. Yeah, and that's wow. where the torque is, is too. Is yeah, a diesel has power almost at idle. I mean, look, the yeah. torque band on them, eighteen hundred or whatever they are. Right, right. So right. you know, you're not wide open. That's why they get better fuel mileage because you're not like, like the gas engine has to be almost wide open to have power, and a diesel is a little above idle. So that's a big difference. So I wonder then why they're selling this truck even with a gasoline option. It sounds like diesel is really the way to go. Well, because sometimes diesel is 80 cents a gallon higher. It costs 8,000 or more to get the combination. Yeah, the there's diesel. a premium for getting the diesel version of this, and it's oh yeah, over eight thousand dollars, like you said. Well, that's true. That's but a I'm, lot of money, dude. Of it money. is, and as you think about how you pay that eight thousand off in fuel savings, you may you may not get there for ten years. Yeah, I mean, I suppose if you're if miles. you're towing every day, then that yeah. might be something to look at. But if you're you know a weekend warrior, maybe you're going out once or twice a month with your toys you know maybe the gasoline engine is still the way to go as long as you're prepared for this kind of not a lot of power going up these hills exactly and that's kind of the trade-off on it if you're going to pull big traders i say 16,000 plus a lot you really need the diesel mm -hmm. if you're towing 12,000 pounds you can do fine with a gasoline engine but that's part of that choice you make with which truck you want because you know it does it's it can be 200,000 miles to pay off a diesel cost with just mm -hmm. the fuel savings alone. Plus, your oil changes cost you twice as much. Your, you know, you know, the, the fuel filters cost you twice as much or more. Your diesel mechanics cost you more per hour. There's a lot of extra expenses that goes into a diesel. So the 2015.
2015 Chevy Silverado 2500 four-wheel drive LT crew cab. <laughs> that is a long name. This truck starts at 42655 but I've got the convenience package here. I've got the Z71 off-road package with some Rancho shocks and a couple of other cool little things and a couple of little dribs and drabs here like the shiny wheels and the spray liner on the back. So all told, you're going to be putting out $49,545 for this baby. Whoa, mama. Now you're, you're still wide open throttle, right? I am. Just wanted to make sure everybody knew that your foot is firmly planted on the floor. How yeah. are we doing temperature wise? They're all we're the gauges good? are normal. We're all in center of the gauges. So okay. yeah, we're, we're averaging 3.9 miles per gallon. No, it's 2.6. We've gone 3.9 miles. We're averaging 2.6. Oh, oh, thank you. 2.6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. woohoo! Yeah, and if, if it stayed at the right RPMs, can you imagine what we'd be getting if we were holding 4,000 <laughs> RPM? Well, right now we're holding pretty steady at 5, right? Yeah. 49, we're, 5? We're, yeah, we're this 40. is as good as it's going to get. Yeah, yeah. 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 But we are People are just like, zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> we get past the semi. That's always a nice sign. And we're not fully in the slow lane. <laughs> yeah, we're not in the slow lane. And we're a fully loaded truck, so, you know, and we're, we're just a small version of that. Okay, let's just hope <laughs> nobody jumps in front of us and screws up our momentum. Oh, I know, that's the yeah. worst. Yeah, that's and then you're like, we're... never mind, let me get over. The hitch comes out far enough that I can actually lower the tailgate without hitting a jack, which isn't that way on a lot of trucks. This also has a two and a half inch reducer to two inch because that's what we're using, a two inch shank on this. But this is a heavy duty, so you could put a two and a half inch receiver hitch stinger hitch, adjustable ball hitch. If we're really lucky, we can stay out of that lane, but I think I'm gonna to have to pull over. This I right lane is too. beat to death. The chains and all yeah. the stuff they do, this right lane is so rough. So and at least the load feels well balanced. I'm not feeling a lot of pogoing or anything else. It doesn't feel like the rear end's moving itself around. It doesn't no, we feel from there. Yeah, it, it, it feels good. Uh -huh. it feels good to me. I think we're doing fine and we got our we got room to move over so we can get a runway because there are a stack of semis up here. Indeed. Are we halfway through this, Nathan? Or? Yeah, we're just, well. Yeah. Well, we're at 4.8 miles. This is what, eight, eight miles? Eight yeah, it's miles. almost, yeah. 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 So, so it's, but our time is, well, it's not looking very good. <laughs> we're staying above 40, so that's something. We are staying above 40, but a lot of those trucks we've taken up here have been averaging between 55 and 65. Yeah. So we are definitely below. I kind of feel like I, yeah. like maybe this will help if I do this. Come on, girl. Yeah. And you're, Come on. So there's a little bit more room in this 2015 truck than there was in last year's. I've got a little bit more foot space here, which is quite nice. This folds up, so I can make this a six passenger truck if I need to. And when it's folded down, I've got three cup holders, a couple of little cubbies, a little cubby here, and then this will open up for even more stuff. And this is where your USB port and all that fancy stuff is. So, you know, when you've got a truck, you're probably using part of this as your office part of the time. So you've got a lot of room here for your workspace. We're here in the Rockies and that diesels are so popular here because of this altitude, yeah, because yeah. of you know what it takes to, to climb a hill out here. If I was but, driving in Kansas, it wouldn't be nearly as important to me as it is driving here in the Rockies. Because exactly. starting down at Silverthorne, is a, it's above a mile high, correct? Yeah, yeah Silverthorne's close to 8,000 8, feet. 8,000 feet and up yeah. here we're at like 12 maybe? Well, 11,000, 11,000. Yeah. 11, yeah, and and so that's, this is the hardest test you can do with a truck, with the only exception being temperature. It's not super hot outside. Yeah. Um, although it is summer, you know, we're in high altitude, so it's like 75 degrees outside. Yeah, this, that's another thing is that the, the slow lane here is, it's got potholes. There's some parts here that are really rough, actually. Really? But I think we passed yeah. one of them. I think the bandit's not blocking for us anymore. He's back there in the, in the slow lane. <laughs> we got Roman out there in a Miata. <laughs> The top down, he's running around playing, he's blocking for us, so we're calling him Bandit. He needs the Burt Reynolds mustache, which he actually has had in the past. Oh there my is gosh. footage of Roman with a Burt Reynolds is there mustache. Really? Yes, there is. Oh, I would love it's that. Out there. Oh, I would love that. He doesn't have the cool Burt Reynolds laugh. He needs that. Yeah, we need the CB so we can communicate with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, another thing that I've got here right front and center is a little computer screen that will give me a lot of technical information like my tire pressure, my transmission um, fluid, and the temperature of that. So it really is very, very helpful to have that right in front of you. One other thing that I want to mention is these side mirrors. Since this is a vehicle to tow, they stick out quite a bit, but to fold them in, which you might want to do when you're parking, I have to do that manually. So there's no electronic button for that. Come on. Look at this. We think we're going to do good. There's not a whole lot of traffic ahead of us. We are starting to go down from oh, three lanes to two God. lanes. I know, yeah. but this is We're the steepest that part, part right now. This has got to be the steepest <laughs> part right here because we have slowed down immensely. Yeah. We're at yeah. like 35. 
Yeah, this is the tough part. We're still not stopping the timer until we get to the lights. Until we get yeah. to the lights. We got to, and now we're really, really. Oh, we're really dragging. Struggling. Oh, look, we got a clean runway ahead of us. This is gonna be a good run. Oh, nice clean run. Nice clean girl. run. But, um, I can't believe she's not downshifting. I know, I, exactly. We're in like 3,000 RPMs, y'all. We're almost dropping to 3,000, and this thing should have downshifted. A long it's, time ago. Yeah. This but it's still down. It's just not doing it automatically no, for some reason. No, we yeah. had the same problem with the half ton. Really? Yeah, exactly they, the same problem. I think they, crazy. they want you to pump it. They don't want you to stay away up in front. They want you to right. get off and give it again. I think right, because if it's just right now, you're, we're just going to go, there oh, there she goes. Finally, it shifted. At like 2,800 RPM. Now, I don't understand that. And if you guys okay. do, then let yeah. us know. Here we go. And now, 2.5 miles per gallon. And 10, 10 minutes, 38 seconds. 10 oh, minutes, yeah. 38 seconds. So That's uh, our slowest time. Wow. That's our slowest. Woo. Wow. Well, yes. thank you for joining us for another fun film. No, we're not going to sign <laughs> off here in the middle of a tunnel. <laughs> Woo. Oh, now I can rest my foot. I, I know, I know. Floor. You worked hard, girl. You worked hard. Ooh, it's really warm right here. <laughs> like, immensely warm. Like, I could fry an egg on the dashboard. Well, among all the things we've established here, one of them is that there's something odd going on with the shift algorithm in the gas-based General Motors trucks. That's right, it drops below the power curve. Even in tow mode, the 410 rear end, you lose power. You gotta start all over at 3,500 RPM to get back up to the power. Yeah, I think the takeaway here is that if you are planning on towing a lot with your truck, you owe it to yourself to look at the diesel. Absolutely. Especially in the mountains, it's a big thing. <laughs> So, Emmy, what do you think? Your first time on TFL truck doing the Ike Gauntlet. It's pretty awesome. I mean, you know, I always love to be here in beautiful Colorado, so I'm just glad that I can make it here on my very first TFL truck Ike Gauntlet video. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, you can turn in, tune in to TFL truck for more real world reviews and check us out on all the social medias. As always, it's Emmy Hall and Nathan. And next time we have a Ram with Mr. Truck. Yes. That's right. There is a Ram that's coming. It's going to compete with this baby. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, y'all. We'll see you soon. Bye. So I got called out for the ice water challenge by my clothing sponsor, Offroad Vixens. Make sure you go to offroadvixens.com for the best in ladies off-road clothing. And I'll be donating $100 to their charity, which is Four Wheels to Heal, which takes wounded veterans from all branches of service and takes them out on some off-road adventures. So that is 4w2h.org. And uh, I'm calling out some, because I got some pavement friends, I got some dirt friends, so I'm calling out my dirt friends, Rhonda Cahill and Rochelle Croft from Expedition Overland. You guys gotta do it. And I'm calling out Dodge designer extraordinaire, Ralph Giles. That's right, baby, Ralph, you gotta do it. And you gotta donate a hundred bucks to my charity, fastaid.org. They help uh, off-road racers when they get hurt or when they pass away in a race. They help with medical bills and they help out with their family. So we're here in Colorado, so I thought uh, ice water would be the stream. This is just a few degrees below, or a few degrees above freezing from the snow melt. So, down here. Okay, Andre's cold enough. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh my god. Is it cold, Andre? Da! Cut your CPD. Is it cold? Like Siberia! Yeah. Oh my god, okay! Like Siberia, Emmy! Andre. Okay, go! And that is why we love our Emmy helper up here. Because she does crazy stuff like this. And thank God she didn't call me or Nathan out. Good job, Emmy. Thanks, you guys.